In today's class, uh, I'll be talking to you about the different uh, mechanisms of storing data in SQL Server. Okay, so now for us to understand how a data is organized, it is important for you to understand how internally SQL Server stores the data. Now when it comes to the fact that, yes, it is very easy to log on to SSMS, which is SQL Server Management Studio, and click on the database option and create a new database. It is as simple as, let me quickly open SQL Server, it is as simple as Object Explorer, Database, New Database. And then here yeah, you can create a new database, let's say, let's call this database a test field. Now, what I want you to uh, acknowledge here is multiple uh, file groups. It need not be only a primary file group. It depends upon how you want to organize your data onto your disks. On top of that, you can have multiple files, not only file groups you can have and multiples, you can also have multiple files within a group. So this is primarily is just one file group and within one file group you can have multiple files and to take this idea you can have multiple such file groups. Let's say you can have group 1, group 2, group 3 and within each group you decided that uh, first this, to address my scalability issues or to address my challenges with I.O. and to um, ease up the backup policies of my data I want to have let's say five files within one file group. So uh, the classic example that you can think of when you're deciding this part is let's say you want to have a database which would uh, store it for let's say last 10 years and of course it would also uh, you will also be appending data on a day on day basis. Now when you're doing your archival operation you would not be interested to install or you would not be interested to uh, uh, update and manage the historical partitions. So in that cases, you can also have your file groups managed so that only and only when you are doing your current backup processes, you are only processing your current file groups and all of the archival file groups, let's say for last nine years, you can manage them through a standard archival process. Now, this gives you a brief understanding of the different files that are there in SQL Server. Now, to understand more of them in detail, a data file by definition is a file which would store your core data. By core data, as in, the, as in the actual data that you would be interacting with, probably your applications inserting some data into your databases or your users or your analysts inserting some data uh, for them in order for them to retrieve that data at some point in future. Similarly, uh, any operation or any task that you do in SQL Server, any object that you create in SQL Server, it could be a table, it could be a database, it could be any uh, select operation, insert operation, delete operation, update operation, any event that you do on SQL Server gets logged. Of course, you can control the amount of logging that SQL Server generates, but if your operations are logged, Semantically, it should mean that that action, so that events must be recorded somewhere. And log files is the ID place where all of your transactions that you are doing on a particular object gets logged. So if it's a it's, it's a bunch of tables in a database, and let's say you are you, you just create a few tables, you insert a few thousand rows in those tables, and then you decide I want to get rid of let's say double up tables. So all of these actions of creating tables, inserting rows and then deleting two tables. All of these transactions or all of these events that you've done on your database gets logged into a log file. In SQL Server terminology, these files are called as transaction log files. There's another quick point that I want you to touch base upon. All of your database files or all of your data files by default should have an extension of MDF, the 
uh, the word MDF would stand for master data file. Similarly, if uh, the ID for mention uh, uh, for your log files or for your transaction log files should be LDF, which stands for transaction log data file. Similarly, as we've already discussed that, uh, it need not be a case wherein you just have one data file for database, you can have multiple such data files for your database and same applies to your transaction log files. You can have multiple such transaction log files for your database. The decision to have single file or multiple file depends solely upon the database administrator as of how that uh, person or database administrator wants to manage the SQL Server instance. So if you have multiple data files or you have multiple log files, the onus then becomes on the uh, DBA to ensure that each file or even each file group, be it for data files or be it for log files, are managed efficiently. The ideal part where uh, you would find your transaction logs would be Let's focus on a bit of works, properties, files, and then if you focus on this part, it would say that uh, so for all the instances that you have on your Windows uh, box, uh, I have a Windows 7 installation on my laptop. The ideal part is the home drive for SQL Server and uh, as you can see the home drive for SQL Server 2014 instance is C drive program files um, of SQL Server MS SQL 12 dot MS SQL Server which is the instance name that I have chosen for my SQL Server and then within that uh, the path then follows as the home path of SQL Server installation or the base directory of the installation for my product slash MS SQL slash data so at this part, SQL Server would create or the DBA can create or can choose to keep the data path or the data file and the log file. But, in, but ideally speaking, in an uh, enterprise scale solution or an enterprise web solution, uh, you should not choose C drive as your, or you should not choose the OS drive, let's put it this way, you should not choose your OS drive to store your data paths or your log paths because as we discussed this in the earlier class, we said that in a HA-like solution or in a DR-like solution, what if uh, you have to decide or your Windows administrator takes a call to wipe off the OS partition and recreate or rebuild the to recreate or rebuild the OS part. Consider the fact that you have kept all your data parts and all your log parts on the OS part. Uh, that becomes a challenge for the Windows administrator and for you because if that path is formatted or if that path is rebuilt, you are at the potential risk of losing all of your uh, SQL binaries and all of your SQL data which includes both your SQL Server data and your SQL Server logs. So in an ideal case and which is also recommended by most practitioners that you should not store your SQL Server data on your OS path. You can choose uh, let's say if you have multiple partitions and you've decided that your C drive would host your OS, then you can probably choose, let's say, D drive, E drive, or any other drive to host your uh, data files and your log files. Now, since we are already discussing the fact that you should not choose your OS drive to store your SQL Server data and your SQL Server logs. It is also very important and a recommended practice by most database practitioners that if possible, if your enterprise has the luxury to have multiple drives on your servers, you should always configure your uh, storage of logs and storage of data on different drives altogether. So to give you a quick example, let's say you have uh, five partitions on your hard drive. Uh, from C, D, E, F, G. Now, C has been blocked uh, first by the OS part, so all your OS level binaries and all your system level binaries are residing on your C drive. Now, you can make a quick call saying that I will choose my D drive to store all of my SQL Server data and I will then choose my E drive to, uh, to store all of my 
uh, transaction level logs uh, which uh, SQL Server would generate. So what you've achieved here is that both your uh, SQL Server data and your transaction level logs are stored on the same machine, but they are stored uh, by logical separation. One is on uh, D drive and one is on E drive. The benefit that you would get, of course, is from the fact that uh, there would be no contention issues because a lot of times we may experience that transaction logs with SQL Server generates uh, simply goes out of bounds. So uh, even in the cases where transaction logs are going at a rapid pace, you will not face a challenge that your SQL Server data is not simply finding space, sufficient space enough for you to run your queries or for you to efficiently manage your database.